flashcards are a very popular printable used by teachers, parents and adults alike. Today I'm going to show you how to use Affinity Publishers data merge tool along with AI to create flashcards quickly and simply. So the first thing I did was go to ChatGPT and ask it to give me a list of flashcard ideas for children. And this is what it came up with. All of which look pretty sensible ideas to me. And then I went to Etsy to see which of those came up when I did a search. So if I start with the one I quite like, which is flashcards uh, for fruit and vegetables for children, I'll put for kids. And this is looking promising. It's not high competition. There's several ads at the top, but look, there's this one, it's nearly 3,000 sales. All right, not guaranteed it's all that particular one, but it's not far off, I'm sure. Several others further down with quite high sales. So without really even going any further, I could jump straight onto that one and quite speedily put together a set of flashcards with fruit and vegetables. The other idea that ChatGPT had listed, which I quite liked, was animals, which would be quite appropriate for children. So if we take a look at what comes on Etsy for that one, and if I just change the search to animals, And again, the competition isn't huge. It's higher than fruit and veg, but it's not huge. Um, again, we go down past the ads, but also uh, the selling price is a bit higher, which is always better. And again, plenty of sales. So there's a couple to start us off without having to do too much more research. Now you could go on and go right down through the list that ChatGPT had come up with and check out all of them to see which ones would give you the, the best options. But I'm going to stick with the first one of fruit and vegetables for now. So I've come back to ChatGPT and I've put in now, please can I have a list of fruit and vegetables for flashcards for kids? and it will hopefully bring me up a nice list of suitable fruit and veg. There we go. So this I will copy to a text file, literally by just highlighting and copying. Paste in so I have my list because now I'm going to put each one of those in because you're probably thinking we're going to need uh, images for all of these. So I'm going to get AI to do that for me as well. So I'll just move this one out of the way for now. And I'm going to use Leonardo.ai to generate my images for me. So if you haven't heard of Leonardo AI before, you can come to leonardo.ai and I'll leave that link in the description below and create an account. It's completely free. I'm not going to go through because I've already got an account, but this is very simple to follow. You literally put your name in, your email address and click on count me in and you will be emailed once you have access. Be warned it can take a week to two weeks to do so. So if you're interested in that, I would get the ball rolling and get that going straight away. But once you're in, it looks something like this. You'll have access to this page, which is the main feed. In the same way that Mid Journey, if you're, if, when it started, um, was a public forum and anybody could see the images, that is the same thing here. With a free account, you get 150 credits per day, which is really plenty to do the kind of thing we want to do. I've already played around with this today, so I've used quite a few already. 
But if I go through to AI image generation, you'll see that I've started to put together some of the fruit images that I need. It had some problem with pineapple for some reason. So I had to play around with that one afterwards. But the, the rest of the images, as you can see, are really, really good. And it's a very simple prompt I've used. A clean and simple sideways image of a whatever fruit you want with a slight shadow underneath and a white background. And I've also used a negative prompt of no multiple images, no mixed up limbs, no text, no background. This is the same kind of stuff that you would use in Mid Journey. So for this one, I'm going to use Cherry. and click generate. And I'm only doing one image at a time because I really don't need more. Uh, and that way I don't use up any more tokens than I need to. So if I click generate and I'm doing this last one so that you can see how long it takes because it really is very quick. There you go. And that's not bad. It's exactly what we need for a flashcard. It's the image uh, because we will add the, the words in later. From there, you download, you press the download image and save it to wherever you want to. I have a folder set up for all of the fruit. And the next thing I'm going to do is set up the template within Publisher so that we can do a data merge. So I'm going to set up a document based on letter is size. There we go. I've set it in inches. I don't need pages to be facing and I don't need any margins. And I'll create that. And this is Affinity version two I'm using. And then I'm going to set up uh, four flashcards on the page so that you don't have to have um, the page size as the flashcard size. You can do that, of course, but for selling digital files, it's probably easier to sell a page that has four on the page that people can print at home and then cut up. So we're going to add in shapes of a just a rectangle, which I'm going to set up as and you come down here to the right hand corner for the size. I'm going to set that up as four inches wide by 5.25 high. And I'll just move that up into the corner slightly. And I don't want a background on it. So I come up here to color and click on the strike through to take the color off. And I want a very faint uh, stroke. So that's going to be one point. And I'm also going to make that stroke uh, a, a light gray instead of a black. So we make that 85. So that's my flashcard shape set up. Now the next thing to do is to add the fields in. So I'm going to want a picture up here. So I set in a picture field and then I want a text frame down here for the name of the fruit. Write in the word name. You can, you can call this anything you want. It doesn't really matter because we're going to associate that with fields in a data file in a moment. So I'm going to center that. This I'm using the context menu at the top here also center it vertically, make the font size somewhat bigger, 24 point should do, and choose a font that is perhaps a little bit more aligned with young children, something like Comic Sans. There we go. So that is the basis of what we're setting up. Now I'm going to copy that three times. So to do that, I select it all, hold down control, drag it across to the side and it will pick everything up and copy it all. And it's moved it a little bit too close. So if you hold down shift, select what you want to move and then move your arrows, you can shift the whole thing aside in line. Copy the whole lot again, press down control, and drag down. And then I have another 
set below. Right, so now I've got four on a page. And I will save that file so that I don't lose it. But Affinity does auto save, but nonetheless, it hasn't got a name. So I'm going to save that file. And I've just called that flashcard template for now. So the next thing we have to do is set up our spreadsheet with the data that we're going to merge into here. To do that, I have set up an Excel file and you can do this in Google Sheets as well. I have set up eight columns, two for each card on the page. So we have the first one, which is name and picture, the second one, which is name two and picture two and so on. I've already added in the details for the first seven. I'm just leaving the last one to show you here, which was Cherry. And you're, to do the path, which is what you need for the image, you go to Explorer where you've got your files, click on the picture that you want to add, and then come up here to Copy Path. Click on that move that out the way, come back to uh, picture four column and press control V to paste in. And then I'm going to save that. And I, you save it as a comma delimited file. It's the format that publisher requires to be able to read the data. And that's really just a case of going to file save as, browse, wherever you want to put it, and then choose in the drop down here, comma delimited. As I've already done it, I won't do that again. Once you've saved that, then you can go back to your publisher file. Now we're going to connect that data file to this template. This is version two, which is slightly different to version one. And I do have another video here, which I'll link for version one. But here we're going to go to Window, Data Merge Manager, and we're going to add the file that we want to use. And of the two I've got, one of these is an Excel file and the other one is a comma delimited file. So I need that first one, which is the comma delimited file. And click on open, close that for now. Now we're going to connect the field names to the names in this template. And to do that, we go to window, references and fields. Okay, and you can see here that the file is linked and these are the fields that we want to connect. Click on the first one and highlight the whole of the word. Choose the first data name and double click on it and you'll see it'll put the little carrots either side of the word. Do the same for the second one but come down to name two and you'll see it changes it to name two and keep going for the rest down to name three and then down to name four and then go back to your move tool collect select the first picture frame and do the same process but choosing the pictures picture two picture three picture four okay that's all the fields now mapped and at this point I would save again but that's just me being overcautious. So now we're going to merge the data and we come up to Window, Data Merge Manager. Make sure your file's selected. And it's a good idea to always click on Update before you uh, do the actual generate because if you've made any changes in the Excel sheet or your CSV file and you've forgotten about it, it, it just makes sure that it gets loaded through. So now we'll click on Generate. And there you can see that all the pictures have come through. Now the pineapple one seems to be a little bit big, but I can alter that to suit. There we go. And you might find you have one or two like that that you have to play around with. 
but if that's the only thing you need to do then really it's very quick now this the same process I've only done a couple of pages but if you had 30 pages it wouldn't take you any longer to generate all of those what takes the time is generating those images initially and even that's very quick using AI and adding in the paths to your spreadsheet to make sure that this bit generates correctly. You can set up your spreadsheet in advance, collect your images, make sure you've got everything loaded in here and then do your generation later or you can set up your template within Publisher, however you want to do it, at any time. The, these things can be done completely separately. But that's a very quick and easy way of creating flashcard files to sell on the likes of Etsy, Gumroad, anywhere else you choose to sell your digital files. And remember, ChatGPT gave me a long list of different flashcard subjects which has given me plenty of scope to create lots of different files. There's 30 here and I'm sure I could get some more if I asked it to add more to the list. So you certainly never stuck for ideas. I hope that's helped with your creation process uh, and removed any stumbling blocks that you may have thought of, oh, I've got to create this image or I've got to create that image. You really don't need to do anything other than compile it and this is a fast way to do so. Alongside of that, if you are also a person who likes to use PowerPoint, Marianne Blake of Marianne Designs has got a new course coming out on Wednesday, which shows you how to do the same process and a few other things within PowerPoint instead of a Publisher. And if you've arrived here through my link on my email, you'll already know that. But if you haven't, then that might be worth checking out as well. And I will leave a link for that in the description below. I've been Jane Willingale of Silver Zone Printables. Until the next time, thanks for watching.